join my Patreon at patreon.com slash bunnytales for the full uncut reactions. Thank you for watching. Hi everyone. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Star Trek, the original series. Today we're going to be watching an episode from season two called A Mock Time. I am using a new camera. I'm still trying to get the lighting and the settings and everything all situated. So just know that things are probably going to be looking different um, from here on out for a while as I try to adjust and make changes and make things look the way I want them to. And yeah, let's watch some Star Trek. Hope you guys enjoy. It's Spock. He's become increasingly restive, I'd almost say nervous. And for another thing, he's avoiding food. Oh, that just sounds like Mr. Spock in one of his contemplated phases. <laughs> it's just Spock being Spock. What's this? Oh. <laughs> oh, Vulcan Plumic soup. You never give up hoping, do you? Carry on, Miss Chapel. When I suggested to Spock that it was time for his routine checkup, turned to me and said, you will cease to pry into my personal matters, doctor, or I shall certainly break your neck. Yes. Not very Spock-like. Whoa. Oh, if I want anything from you, I'll ask for it. Uh. I should like to request a leave of absence on my home planet. Yes or no? What is the meaning of this, Spocky boy? Well, hey, a Spock-centered episode. I won't complain. I wish to take my leave on Vulcan. What is that? He's got a blade behind his back or something. What's wrong? I need rest. I'm asking you to accept that answer. Helm. Yes, Captain. Alter course to Vulcan. Increase speed to warp four. Aye, sir. I suppose most of us overlook the fact that even Vulcans aren't indestructible. No. So... We're not. I wonder if something's controlling him or if this is so important to him that he would like threaten violence if Kirk said no to his request. Inauguration ceremonies, Altair 6, have been advanced seven solar days. Your order to alter your flight plan is filed to accommodate. Mr. Chekhov, compute course and speed necessary for compliance. Insufficient time to stop off at Woken. Head directly for Altair 6. Sailor's luck, Mr. Spark. Oh, no. Don't worry, I'll see that you get your leave as soon as we're finished. I don't think whatever this is I'm can wait. I quite understand, Captain. Why you got your shoes on the bed? How late will we arrive for the ceremonies if we increase speed to maximum and divert to Vulcan just long enough to drop off Mr. Spock? We're on course for Vulcan, Captain. As Mr. Spock ordered. Oh. Oh, my. Come with me, please. Deck five. He looks you changed spot exhausted. Why? Or out of it. Like he's in a brain fog. It's quite possible. Quite possible. Well, why'd you do it? He, do he has no recollection of doing it. I do not know why, nor do I re remember doing it. Captain, lock me away. I cannot. No Vulcan could. Explain further. I order you to report to the sick bay. Complete examination. McCoy's waiting. So he is clearly not in control. Now, is it his own emotions that are causing this? Some extreme case of, or is it a physical ailment? Or is it somebody or something? Come in, Spock. I'm all ready for you. And now I'll go to my quarters. My orders were to give you a thorough physical. In case you hadn't noticed, I have to answer to the same commanding officer that you do. Come on, Spock. Yield to the logic of the situation. Well, he can't argue with that. <laughs> Examine me. For all the good it'll do either of us. A nervous tick. First we're going to Vulcan. Then we're going to Altair. Then we're headed to Vulcan again. And now we're headed back to Altair. I think I'm going to get spacesick. <laughs> I like Chekhov being part of the crew. If you don't get him to Vulcan within a week, eight days at the outside, he'll die. What? Why within eight days? Explain. Yes, please do. I don't know. 
There's a growing imbalance of body functions. The physical and emotional pressures will simply kill him. We gotta go. We've already wasted too much time going back and forth. You say he says you're going to die unless something is done. What? Stop. You've been called the best first officer in the fleet. If I have to lose that first officer, I want to know why. There's a thing no outworlder may know. Why does his room look like a dungeon cell? It is a deeply personal thing. Explain. Consider that an order. Captain, there are some things which transcend even the discipline of the service. Maybe not a dungeon, but like a BDSM room or <laughs> something. I don't know. It has to do with biology. Okay, and? Vulcan biology. You mean the biology of Vulcans? That's what that means? Reproduction. That's awkward. If any creature as proudly logical as us were to have their logic ripped from them as this time does to us. So is he just like incredibly horny right now? How do Vulcans choose their mates? Haven't you wondered? No, I never wondered. <laughs> I guess the rest of us assume that it's done quite logically. It is not. It strips our minds from us. It is the pawn far. I thought it said porn star. <laughs> I mean, can you blame me with the subject matter? I'd hope that would be spared this. But the ancient drives are too strong to return home and take a wife or die. So if blue balls were a death sentence. I haven't heard a word you've said. I'll get you to Vulcan son. <laughs> this is so strange. Lieutenant, get me Admiral Comac at Starfleet Command Sector 9. Mr. Solo, you don't think... Maybe you ought to plot a course back for Vulcan, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> Yep, there you go, Sulu. Captain Let me alone! Let me alone! Wow! That Vulcan strength, man. Crazy. He will proceed to Altair 6's order. That's that. Why doesn't he say no, that not. the life of his... ...will be busted by Kevin Spock die, can I vote? Nope. I owe my life a dozen times over. Isn't that worth a career? He's my friend. I don't think I really have to say too much about that. Lay in a course for Vulcan. Course already plotted. I see. <laughs> Come on, McCoy. You of all people should understand. Why, why is she there? He's got a mate with a Vulcan, not with you, lady. I had a most startling dream. You were trying to tell me something. He's crying be illogical for us to protest against our natures. The hell is going Her on? face is wet. Miss Chapel, would you make me some of that lo mix soup? Oh, I'd be very glad to do that, Mr. Spock. I like the, I love the continuity between this episode and um, the naked time. Very nice touch with her feelings for Spock. Fridge. Would you beam down to the planet's surface and stand with me? By tradition, the male is accompanied by his closest friends. Thank you, Mr. Spock. This episode. I also request McCoy accompany me. I shall be honored, sir. Aww. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about Wrath of Khan right now. <laughs> Spock, it is I. To bring parted from me and never parted so ever since they were young touching and touched i await you they were meant to be together and or come together in this way to bring my wife oh they already married wonder how they choose does it have to be with her will he die i mean he try he almost Looks like he was about to just 
take um, Chapel to his bed, so I'm not sure if it needs to be her specifically, or it could be anybody, even a human. I mean, Spock is the, you know, um, the result of a human Vulcan thing. <laughs> Now this is the first time we get to see the Vulcan planet. This is exciting. It's very this rocky and red. This is our place of Kunut Kalifi. He described it to me as meaning marriage or challenge. In the distant past, Vulcans killed to win their mates. Does he have to fight? Wish the breeze were cooler. Yeah, how does Vulcan now I understand what that phrase means? The atmosphere is thinner than Earth. Hmm. Hot and difficult to breathe for somebody who's not used to it. Arrives. Oh yeah, to Pring. That name. So my my half brother, he married a girl at one time named Depring. I wonder if there's any connection there. Wow, it's a whole thing. This is this is neat. Pow. The only person to ever turn down a seat in the Federation Council. She has a very fairy-like appearance, like her facial features. Wait, there we go. <laughs> she is beautiful. Are our ceremonies for outworlders? They are my friends. I am permitted this. This is Kirk. Ma'am. Leonard McCoy, ma'am. How does the pledge their behavior? With my life, Devout. I mean, if it's so strange that an outworlder, outworlders are present at his thing, I wonder how crazy it was when his parents got together. Khalifi! What does this mean? What is it? What happened? She chooses the challenge. With him? <laughs> With that he guy? Acts only if cowardice is seen. She will choose her champion. Spock? The blood fever. He will not speak with thee again until he has passed through what is to come. So she sensed, um, like fear in Spock? And so she wants him to prove himself? He will have to fight for her. It is her right. The bring thee has chosen the Khalifi. Spark, does thee accept challenge? Think Spark can take him? <laughs> I doubt it. Not in his present condition. Well, thanks for the vote of confidence. As it was in the dark. Her of outfit, our days, I just noticed. As it is today, I make my choice. This one. What? <laughs> I am to be the one. It was agreed. Be silent. Wait, I thought Spock was gonna fight. What is happening? Wait, oh no, no, no. Oh, I get it. I'm so dumb. Okay, I'm slow. I thought she wanted to fuck Kirk. No, Kirk is her champion that fights against Spock. Is it a fight to the death? I assume. Fuck. <laughs> what the hell? My friend does not understand. The choice has been made, Spock. He is my friend. It is decided. Oh my. Look at her outfit. What happens to Spock if I decline? Another champion will be selected. I can't do it, Jim. I can. And you said Spock might not be able to handle it. If I can knock Spock out without really hurting him. In this climate? In this climate? In this economy? No way! But if he knocks Spock out, then doesn't Spock lose? You can't do it. If I get into any trouble, I quit. And Spock wins, and honor is satisfied. Kirk, decide. He's about to fall over of heat exhaustion. I accept. Bring forth the Lirpa. Is that the weapon there to use? Oh yeah, and let me guess, Kirk can barely lift it. If both okay, well at least it's not that heavy. Uh, what do you mean, if both survive? This combat is to the dead. Yeah, what did you think? 
It looks like they're going to have a digging contest. <laughs> so there's a sharp blade at one end and a, a blunt object at the other. Interesting. Oh, wait a minute. Ma'am. You accepted the challenge. Who said anything about a fight to the death? Challenge was given. And love That's what you accept. get when you don't read the terms of agreement. Let no one interfere. <laughs> McCoy's like, what? I can't let this happen, but what do I do? There's no way Kurt could win. I mean, he can't overcome him with strength, at least. But then again, well, maybe it's more of a fair fight because Spock is, you know, he's got blue balls and all that stuff. Why do their weapons suck? Whoa! Oh! He's, he's, his mind is aflame. Is she stopping it? The air's too hot and thin for Kirk. He's not used to it. The air is the air. What can be done? What can be done? <laughs> what are you going to do? I can compensate with the atmosphere and the temperature with this. We may proceed. Oh, okay. I mean, how does she know that that's not some kind of crazy performing enhancement drug? You're gonna have to kill him, Joe. That's not what we came to Vulcan for, is it? No, no, it's not. <laughs> What's that? We'll help you breathe. Be careful. Sound medical advice. <laughs> no, but he came here because his friendship with Spock and Spock's life is more important than his career. To ask them to fight to the death is it's really messed up. Oh, round two. What, is, what the hell is this? A whip? Oh my god. She said if both survive. So, I mean, there is a chance that it can be, by their laws, uh, like, completed with both of them surviving. Maybe if they both live throughout all their time grounds. Krika. Oh. Put your hands off of him, Spock. He's dead. What? No, he's not. I grieve with the... Oh, man, if looks could kill. As strange as it may seem, Mr. Spock, you're in command now. Any orders? You will instruct Mr. Chekhov to plot a course for the nearest star base, where I must surrender myself to the authorities. Well, that was a really bad idea to come here. To bring. Why the challenge? Stan wanted me. I wanted him. You have become much known among our people, Spock. Well, she Call wanted Mr. him. Legend. Why didn't she have him fight? I came to know that I did not want to be the consort of the legend. If your captain were Victor, he would not want me, and so I would have Stan. If you were Victor, you would free me because I had dared to challenge, and again I would have Stan. Flawlessly logical. Stan, she is yours. You may find that having is not so pleasing a thing after all as wanting. So long and prosper, Spock. I shall do neither. I have killed my captain and my friend. This didn't go how I thought it would. Energize. So he didn't have to bump monkeys or whatever. What's it called? What do you, what, how do you say? But there had to be some sort of contest or agreement that somebody would enter into like a physical relationship Dr. with another I shall be resigning my commission immediately of course a spock so i would appreciate spock I... doctor please He's... let me finish <laughs> i intend to offer no defense not only is he alive but he's walking around me first? captain <laughs> wait what did jim ah, that smile that outburst i'm pleased See you, Captain. You've seen. He me. did put something in that needle that wasn't what he said. Blame McCoy. That was no triox yes. compound he shot me with. He slipped in a neural paralyzer. Simulated death. 
Indeed. Yep. That's what I just... Yep. <laughs> Spock, what happened down there? The girl, the wedding. It must have been the combat. I found I had lost all interest in Chipring. The madness was gone. Here we go. I don't quite fully understand it, but I'm happy with this outcome. There's just one thing, Mr. Spock. You can't tell me that you weren't on the verge of giving us an emotional scene that would have brought the house down. Merely my quite logical relief that Starfleet had not lost the highly proficient captain. Uh-huh. Of course, Mr. Spock. Your reaction was quite logical. Thank you, Doctor. And a pig's eye. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, there's a lot to say about that episode. First of all, the most important thing is huge, huge props to Bones for his quick thinking, for his ingenuity, and, well, I, did he bring that on him because he thought that maybe he would need it, or does, is it something that he always just carries with him? Or does that little needle of his carry just... A bunch of stuff at one time and he just kind of picks which one he needs like a one of those color changing pens you know I really really enjoyed the focus on the friendship of Kirk and Spock that they would risk their careers for each other that they would risk their lives for each other and yeah I just got really emotional um, I was remembering you know the wrath of Khan when Kirk was explaining how Spock saved him so many times and that was worth losing his career over without any hesitation these two characters their relationship with each other phenomenally written and acted over the course of the series as far as i can tell and the movies it's really beautiful well done and i don't think this show would be the same without it i thought it was very awesome that we got to learn more about Vulcan culture and we got to see the planet and see how it is. The temperature, the atmosphere, the look of it. It's a very harsh looking environment. They have a lot of different customs that we get to have a look into and um, their customs are very important to them. I wasn't too big on the outfits of, that the men were wearing but the women both looked phenomenal their outfits looked phenomenal they were both very beautiful very regal very elegant very also very strong feeling a strength of spirit and will i could feel emanating from both of them but especially to pow i thought the actress who played to pow did a really good job i initially thought this was the episode that spock was gonna get laid um i did not know that we were gonna get this whole battle to the death and I would love to learn more about this whole thing that we kind of saw and some of the stuff that we didn't get to see like what if what if he chose they chose each other what if what if they chose each other what would have happened then and yeah the name to Pring so like I said my brother he he was married once to a woman named De Pring D-E-P-R-I-N-G and my mom would always say like, you know, that's a really weird name. Don't know where it came from. And I guess it would, it would be wishful thinking to think that it came from this. But immediately when I saw that name, it reminded me of, of that, that lady Depring, who I met once, I think when I was little, but Depring, Depring, interesting. I'm going to say that this has been my favorite episode of season two so far. I can see why, you know, it seems to be kind of a fan favorite. And I hope for more stellar episodes like this, where we get to learn more lore about the universe and how things work in this world that we are exploring, giving Leonard Nimoy a chance to show his acting chops more building up the relationship between Kirk and Spock and of course Bones getting a chance to use his wits, his ingenuity, his fast thinking to save the day. What's not to love? What did you guys think about this episode? I hope you guys 
enjoyed experiencing it through my first time eyes and I hope to see you guys in the next episode. I'll see you guys in the comments and take care. Till next time. Bye-bye. Oh, and uh, live long and prosper.